Hey, Jeff Gibbons here with another machine video. And in this one, I am going to be going over working with third-party virtual instruments inside machine. And I'm gonna be using Arturia's V Collection 7 for this video. I just got this collection and I'm super excited about it. So I wanna show you how I've been working with it inside machine, give you a couple tips and tricks. I'm not gonna go through the patches. I just wanted to make this video, get it out there, and then be able to do future videos on some of the individual synthesizers inside the collection because the collection is mind-blowing. There is so much stuff in here. There are just a few things that you should know about working with virtual instruments inside machine. A couple little tips that you might not find in the manual very easily or you might scratch your head going, I wish I knew how to do that. So first things first, I've got a little beat in here. And that one's from Magnetic Coast, an expansion by Native Instruments. So I'll put a link to that in the description. So let's go look at the browser because there's a few things here that you should know about for sure. You're probably gonna see your instruments as categories and that's fine. You can go to synthesizers and you'll see your V collection there, but you're gonna see a lot of other stuff as well. If you just wanna get to the V collection, all you have to do is press shift and go to vendors. Now I can see Arturia, I can see all of my other companies that I've got instruments from, and now I can see just the V collection plus pigments in here. So it makes it easy to get to the different virtual instruments. And then of course, this is one of my favorite parts is the fact that you get previews when you're loading things through machine or through complete control. So let's go to the Jupiter 8, and then now I can see all of the patches and I can get a preview. So let's go through, just listen to a couple here. Let's try filtering this by other sequences here. And these are gonna be just some kind of arpeggiated type patch. Okay, let's try that one right there. We load it up and and I've got it in keyboard mode. Okay, so I kind of messed that up at the end. I'll just fix that up. And definitely want to quantize these kinds of rhythmic things because you want them to start exactly on the bar. And there's another tip for these kinds of things is quantize the beginning of the notes and there is no way as of yet to quantize the ends of notes in machine. So all you have to do is go in and drag out each of the notes so they go right up to the end of the bar. Let's have a listen and see if that works. And so another important tip that is easy to forget is how do you edit the virtual instrument? So of course you can double click on the software itself. You can click the little arrow button right here to open it up, or you can go to the mixer and see it in here. So there are a bunch of different ways to do that, but a lot of people like working from the hardware. So a really quick way to get the virtual instruments that you're working with to pop up is just to hold shift as long as you're at the sound level here. So press that plug in button if you're not already there, say you're in the browser or something like that. You make sure you're on plug in and on sound and you hold shift and edit and that pops up the virtual instrument on the screen so you can get to parameters, you can see things really quickly from right there. Every single virtual instrument in this collection is already mapped out to these knobs right here. So you can see if you're on the sound level, all you have to do is cycle through the different pages and you'll get to all of the parameters that you've got on this synth. And some of them have a ridiculous amount of pages of information. So an easy way to get around this is if you want to have access to certain parameters, say if you're playing live or something like that, the easiest thing to do is to set up a macro. So let's just quickly go over that, say for this virtual instrument right here, so I press the macro button and then up on the software, I can see this ability to set up a bunch of pages of macros. So let's do this. Page one, I've got, I'm gonna hit the little select button right underneath. If you can't see it, it's this button right here. So I drop down that little menu, hit on the select button and then I'm gonna go to Jupiter 8 and then I can see 
the first set of pages. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine pages that were already mapped out to the knobs. So now I can go to the filter. Let's do filter cut off. Let's click on the next slot and do another one. Jupiter eight. And we'll go to the filter and we'll do the resonance. We'll click on the next one. Try another filter, another filter cut off. So different filter. And then let's do say just some cross modulation. So now I've set up a page of macros. I can give this page a name right here. I can call this like basics. So now when I go to my macro button on the machine, I press the macro button and I can see my basics and I can see all of those controls. <laughs> So that's setting up macros. If you've never done that before, it's definitely useful. Another thing to mention is that I found on a Mac, the audio units version of these virtual instruments was kind of skippy. So in other words, when I was controlling a parameter, you can see I'm controlling this filter cutoff right here. It's very smooth and it's because I've loaded the VST version. So what I'd recommend with this and probably with almost any virtual instrument is just to go up to preferences, go to your plugins, and then turn off the audio units versions of any plugins you have that are also VST compatible. So if you see VST on here, just turn off the audio units one. If anybody knows why, you can chime in on the comments for sure, and everything will be much smoother on the computer. A cool thing you can do with any of these sequences or any of the information that you make in here, of course, is to drag out a sequence as a chunk of audio, put that onto another sound, slice it up, and then play with it as we like to do in machine. So let's look at this guy right here. I'm just going to solo this group. What if I want to turn that into a chunk of audio, which I could then chop up and process machine style. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just this one chunk right here. Let's make it two bars long. So I'm going to make a new group and I'm going to drag this audio as by clicking on this little audio waveform way over on the right hand side here. I'm going to drag it onto group E1 and it's going to create an audio file. So you kind of have to click it down, hold it and just wait for the audio to be created. So watch what happens. I hold it down. You can see it making the audio file, bouncing the file. And then I end up with a chunk of audio on a new sound on a new group there. So now I can press the plugin button, see that it's an audio module, click on it and go to sampler. And then I can go to sampling and I can start doing my slicing and all of that kind of stuff. So maybe I'll put it to the grid, set the grid to say 16th. It's not a great example because it's not too dynamic with the sounds, but you get the idea. Now, one thing you need to know about dragging with that little audio waveform, watch this. If I go to file, export audio, there is a little button right here that's extremely important. If this button isn't turned on, so if it's checked off like this, when you go to export your little chunk of loop there, it's going to add a tail because it's trying to give you a tail for the end of the note. When you're mixing down your songs, you would want this because it would give you uh, a, a reverb tail at the end of your song. But when you're dragging this little chunk of audio just to go do some chopping, you want it to be exactly two bars and you don't want this extra sort of ambiguous chunk of audio at the end of it. it really messes you up. Make sure you turn that loop optimize button on. Let me show you what happens if you don't have that on. Drag this over. And then let's have a look at it. Now, if I go to the audio module, go to the sampler, let's load up the sampler and then let's go look at it. You can see there's this ch chunk at the end of it and it's not necessarily exactly a bar or two or something like that. So it really is going to mess up your grid. When I was trying it out before, I was getting all this weird results. So make sure you go to file, export audio as if you're about to export the audio turn on this loop optimize button, close that. And then now when you drag your chunk of audio over, 
you're going to get that chunk of audio that's perfect, exactly two bars long, doesn't have any extra bits on it, and you can just go and slice it up like normal. And that's one of the reasons we are all using Machine is because it's so fun to chop stuff up. So start making your own loops. So let's go to the Mellotron. And for anyone who's into lo-fi stuff, you're going to love the Mellotron. So let's load up the old Strawberry Fields flutes. The Mellotron was this device that had tape loops in it and could have a chunk of a sound that would just keep going over and over as you played the Mellotron. So it was kind of like the very first sampler. And there is our Mellotron. So we can see this little animation. Everything just looks so good. And then each virtual instrument does have a whole bunch of extra information on it. So this is what it would look like before you've opened up the extra stuff. And then you go to this and then we can see all of this other stuff. If you want to add some lo-fi effects to your music, load up the Mellotron, drop a sample in there, and then start using some of the effects that they've got in there as well. So let's try their piano virtual instrument and We'll try American Small Studio. So this is just a really great sounding piano patch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that chunk of audio and I'm going to export it. I'm just going to drag it right onto my desktop. So I keep the mouse button pressed, drag it up onto the desktop and then make a new group, go to the instruments, and I'm going to choose the Mellotron. And another thing I wanted to mention and didn't yet is, in order to reset any of Arturia's virtual instruments so that they are initialized, all you have to do is go up to where the name of the virtual instrument is and choose new preset. And that's going to reset everything to the default levels. So how do we drop in our own samples into Mellotron? You click the little edit button down below on the Mellotron. You take your sample and you drop it right in. And that's it. So let's crank up the flutter. Oh, cool. And that's loading in the different tapes that are playing at the same time. Okay, let's try putting that in our tune. So for the last tip is just working with arpeggiated patches. Uh, I didn't go over the chord mode or keyboard mode, but that's kind of a given for this kind of stuff. So make sure you watch my Machine Basics videos if that's new for you. So here I've got an SEM patch loaded. This is an Oberheim emulation. And this one has an arpeggiated patch on it. So let's have a listen to this. So there it is in keyboard mode. Set it to the seventh chord. And then let's try playing that along with the song. So now I've got some nice seventh chords in there going along with the other sort of sequenced patch, but going through these complex chords with the arpeggiator. You could even use the uh, chord set here in Machine. Let's go to minor, seven or eight. Those are my favorite ones. Actually, the other ones would work really well with this too. So now, take it up an octave. So 
getting some cool complex chords that I could put with this tune. Now the key is going to be for me to dig into every one of these synthesizers because every single one of them is so complex. They've got so much under the hood going on that you can do with these synthesizers. They're all beautifully laid out. And here's the kicker. When you get this V collection, you get almost 10,000 patches. So hopefully that helps you get a handle on how to work with virtual instruments inside machine, third party virtual instruments, and especially this Arturia V collection, definitely worth the money in my opinion. I'm very impressed with these emulations and I can't wait to dig into them. I'm gonna need a lot of time though. And I guess that's something we all kind of have right now, isn't it? So more videos coming in the future. So hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.